Welcome to the second of three videos that deal with the transformations of sine and cosine. We just talked about amplitude and period, now we'll talk about horizontal and vertical translations of the sine and cosine functions. So the goals are to determine the horizontal and vertical translations of a sine and cosine function, and then also to graph the sine and cosine functions with these types of translations. Let's start by talking about horizontal translations. The graph of f of x minus d is translated horizontally compared to the graph of f of x. Now this next part can be a little confusing. It says the translation is d units to the right if d is greater than zero, but notice the form is x minus d. So for example, if we're looking at y equals sine of x minus d, since it's minus a positive d, it will be right d units. Secondly, it states the translation is absolute value of d units to the left if d is less than zero. And if d is negative, minus a negative d, it would be x plus d. So again, a little confusing, but if it's in the form of y equals sine of x plus d, it'll be translated d units left. For y equals sine of the quantity x minus pi, this is a horizontal translation, pi units to the right. For y equals cosine of the quantity x plus pi over three, it'll be pi over three units to the left. Now let's talk about a vertical translation. The graph of f of x plus c is translated vertically compared to the graph of f of x. And the translation is c units up if c is positive, and the translation is the absolute value of c units down if c is negative. So if we have the equation y equals sine x plus one, this will be a vertical shift up one unit. Versus if we have y equals cosine x minus one half, this will be a vertical shift down one half a unit. Let's take a look at an animation that illustrates this. Here we have the graph of y equals sine theta, and the phase shift, or horizontal translation, you can see here, where the graph moves left or right, again, based upon that value of d, and the vertical shift based upon the value of c. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. Again, remember that d will help us find the horizontal translation or phase shift, and c will help us find the vertical translation. It is assumed that you are familiar with the basic, it is assumed that you're familiar with the basic graph of y equals sine theta. So we can see here that our value of d is pi over four, and our value of c is positive one. So we have two translations here. So if it's x minus pi over four, again, we may want to think that's going to be a shift left, but it's actually right pi over four unit. And c is plus one, so the vertical shift is up one unit. Remember the center of the graph y equals sine theta is y equals zero. But if we shift it up one unit, the center of the graph will be along this horizontal line instead. Typically we graph the sine function on the interval from zero to two pi, but since this graph is shifted pi over four units to the right, we'll start our graph here at pi over four, and instead of ending at two pi, we'll end one period here at nine pi over four. The way I obtained this was I added pi over four to two pi. So we're gonna treat this as the center of the graph. We're gonna start it here and end it here for one complete period. And now we're going to use the pattern for the sine function. Remember the next step is divide this into four equal parts from the previous video. So first we'll divide it in half. This would be five pi over four and then divide each of these in half. This would be three pi over four. And then divide this in half. And this would be seven pi over four. Notice we have, so notice we have one pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and so on. So here's the center of the graph. Remember our amplitude is still one. So using these fourths, we'll graph the pattern of the sine function. Remember, sine starts at the center. 
which in this case will be one since it's shifted up one unit, then the next fourth will be up at a maximum. Again, our amplitude is one, so we'll go up one unit for the first fourth, then back down to our center, again down to our minimum now, which one unit below our center line would be here, and then back up to zero. So we have our five points, we can make a nice graph. And now we have a nice graph over one complete period of y equals sine of the quantity x minus pi over four plus one. If we needed to, we could continue this pattern, but we do have a complete graph over one period. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Here we have y equals negative one half plus cosine of the quantity x plus pi over two. Again, sometimes I put the constant c in the front, sometimes it's in back, it really doesn't matter. In this case, our c is negative one half, therefore the vertical transformation is down one half unit. And the horizontal translation, because it's x plus pi over two, it's actually going to be left pi over two units. Okay, here's the graph of our basic cosine function. We'll, we'll use this for reference. First, we typically graph cosine theta from zero to two pi. Since the shift is left pi over two units, we'll start our graph at negative pi over two. Since the period is two pi, if we start here and go out two pi units, we'll be over here at three pi over two. Next, we'll divide this into four equal parts. And since the period is two pi, two pi divided by four will be equal to pi over two radians for each fourth. So here we'd be at zero radians, here we'd be at pi over two, here we'd be at pi radians, and then lastly three pi over two. So we have this divided into fourths. Next, the center of the graph will no longer be the x-axis since we have a vertical shift down half of a unit. So our new center will be the horizontal line y equals negative one half. So we're gonna start our function here and end it here and this will be our center line. Now we'll use the graph of y equals cosine theta for reference. We know typically the cosine function starts at a maximum, and we'll do the same, but our maximum now will be at negative pi over two. And if we go up one unit from negative one half, we'll be up at positive one half. So again, we've taken what's typically our first point we plot for a cosine theta, and we have shifted it left pi over two units and down half a unit. The next fourth is at zero, but now it'll be here at negative one half due to the shift, so we start up, we go down, the next fourth is the minimum, so we're gonna go down again one unit from negative one half to negative three halves. Next we'll go back up to the center line, the next fourth, and then lastly we end at a maximum. In this case it'll be here at three pi over two. This is enough to make a nice graph of one complete cycle of this function, and there it is. Again, these graphs look very similar. We've just scaled our x-axis and y-axis differently, but the pattern remains consistent. Let's go ahead and take a look at both the parent function and the translated function on the graphing calculator. Check, let's make sure we're in radian mode. Next, we'll set our window from negative pi to two pi with scales of pi over four. I've already typed in the function to save time. We have the basic cosine function, then we have our given cosine function. Notice the translated function will be the bold function. And so the light graph is our y equals cosine x. Translated function you can see has been shifted down half a unit and, and left pi over two units. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.